All right, so now I'm going to be trying a different deck, which is a little bit greedier version of the appeasement deck, in my opinion. No card draw in the entire deck. Um, but a lot, a lot of value. So if you survive, you do really, really well for yourself. The, the tricky part is you draw appeasement less often. And how much is that worth? I'm not sure. And that's why I wanted to try this one out. Um... Additions, it has more control elements. It has double sunder. It has a cataclysm. Uh, well, a couple of cataclysms, right? And then it also has uh, last breaths. Only one execute. Um, that was all I could make fit. But um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. It's not something I've personally played with very often. Um... The original deck from the uh, gentleman who suggested this style did not have Cataclysms, it had Fist of the Gods. But I chose to run Cataclysm, both because you want the extra value from Appeasement, because Fist of the Gods you're only discounting by one, Cataclysm you're discounting by two, and also because I felt like there wasn't enough control options with just a Fist against something like Norse that wants to go very wide. Uh, I think it'd be enough against something like um, Chinese, but possibly not against Norse. And looks like we've drawn a pretty good opening. Um, definitely keeping the appeasement. I don't think I'm keeping the sunder. Actually, it's Freya. Do I keep the sunder? I actually think I do keep the sunder. I don't know. I could be completely wrong on that. Freya has no way of healing, so we're just going to whack the stone. So I'm not going to kill the Freya, most likely. Doing 8 damage is pretty difficult. From hand. Gunyir's Might. Okay, I definitely should have whacked Freya. <laughs> Alright. Well, we are appeasing the gods. That's a very scary Freya now. And this deck could be too slow to deal with a single target uh, buffer like this deck, but we do have a Cataclysm. So if, she, if he goes too wide, we could be in a decent spot. Um, I'm pretty sure I have to execute the Scotty. I have to kill the Scotty somehow. So I think what I'm going to do then, instead of actually using Execute, is I'm going to spawn Ra and then Cataclysm, which then stuns them both, unless the only, the real punish to this would be Calder Charge. Because next turn I can Sunder remove that Scotty for free. I really need Annihilation. So that's, that has to happen, right? And then I'm pretty sure I Sunder another Doge. Then we're going to play Baboon. Here. I'm just trying to control him. Because I can't win the board right now. That's impossible. But I don't have very many resources because I don't have a lot of draw. Which is my main problem with a card with a, with a deck with no draw. It really heavily relies on how well do you top deck. Oh man. This is a this is an old style Freya deck right here. This is like release Freya. Buff Freya deck. 
And Soul cannot target the 3-4, as he just found out. You can only target the stone or the 1-4. Um, is Soul worth an execute? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> that represents a lot of damage. It's only two damage. It's a two damage execute, but I think it's worth it. And we're going to box the Freya in. We're going to remove Calder. Then my Fre the Freya cannot attack my Ra. So I'm going to whack the... Whack the Whack the Freya. The Freya has to attack either the Baboon or the Decrepit. I haven't lost yet, but this is scary because he's got a lot of resources that I can't control. And all I've got in hand is appeasement. Which is not great because there's nothing to appease. <laughs> so this is a dead card right now unless I draw something very powerful. Even then it's not great. Oh, don't be a soul. Okay, so Kepri's not bad. Either way, he kills Ra, so I'm healing the stone. How much is boxing him worth? Is it worth one damage? Currently he's at three health. Yeah, I think that's worth. Right? Because then I can do... Uh, two, three. Yeah, I can do three with just the Kepri and the one, one. So that's worth it. And I want to I want to keep him boxed. I don't want him to be able to move. The Banish ends, which drops the Baboon down, which means he still can't smack the Ra, which means the Baboon also kills him. Ymir's kind of scary, not going to lie. Now he can whack whatever he wants. Removing the Ra is probably his best bet, because either way his Freya dies. Oh, he has got Pardon. Maybe that was correct. Okay, well, this is happening. I'm going to trade that and then replay the raw. The sun has risen once again. And then I'm going to play another Capri, I think. Here. Which threatens quite a bit of damage onto that Ymir. Um, actually, that second one should have gone into the Ymir. Setting him at 3-6. Capri does 1 plus 4 does 5, and then Ra does 1. So I should have probably attacked that second archer into the Ymir. And here, I mean, we're seeing just the problem with this deck is I have to play stuff to keep myself going. Um, which means then I don't have anything to buff with appeasement, which is the problem I have with it.
See, so my, my initial thought is attack the stone, appeasement the 2 1, spawn the Bastet, but even then, it's a one mana Bastet, but it doesn't do anything. Except give him more information. So I think I just attack into the Ymir. Put the Ymir at 2 HP. Now I spawn the cat. There's no reason not to buff something. And then you heal the other Capri. It's possible that should have gone onto that, that top stone there. But I don't think I'm in any danger yet. If he plays a Loki, I'll definitely have to heal stones. Fate, whatever. Okay. The Baboon's really been a lifesaver for me. He's been investing a lot of mana into keeping the Baboon out of the fight. He does it again. Oh, shoot. I don't have a way to deal with that Fenrir. Because that's going to have 5 HP. <clears throat> oh, sweet baby annihilation. Come to daddy. See, that was a wonderful top deck. It's a 1 in 14. That's a tiny chance. It's tiny. It's not even worth considering. I didn't consider it. It's like, oh, that would be nice, but that's that would be nice is not going to win you a game. We're definitely killing the Fenrir because I don't have a way of dealing with it, like I said. And then the kitties are going to go into the stones. And again, you may as well buff something. And then you... What are you healing? Norse doesn't have a way to deal five. Heal the stones. Heal the wind condition. His only chance is to spawn some crazy Lokis. He also hasn't played his Web of Ward character yet. Which makes me suspect that it might be a Loki. There's a soul. Okay. He only had one more of those in his deck, and he hadn't played his Web of Word, so I didn't think the Web of Word was a soul, as I just said. He should attack my Ra with it. It'll kill his soul, but it deals the most damage, I think. Either that or he attacks the 2-1. Actually, the 2-1 might be better. Yeah, the 2-1's better. And then he can free up space around Freya. Frenzy. Okay. Now maybe you attack the 3-4. Probably do attack the three. Okay, you attack the two one first, or the one six. Yeah, the one six and then the three four. One six and then three four allows it to deal damage to the stone and my raw. If he attacks my raw first, well, I actually used it out of order, so he's not going to be able to get the other attack. Unless that's patched. Looks like it's patched. Good for them. But I mean, I still have. 16 health of my stones. And that soul's dead next turn. The sun has risen oh, I'm a freaking bot. I spawned that in the wrong spot. That's fine. Still did what I needed it to. And then... Healing the stone or the baboon. He can banish the baboon, so I heal the stone. If this is any other leader, then I heal the baboon. But because he can deal with the baboon and get rid of the ban, uh, get rid of the guard, there's no reason to heal the three-one. So Fenrir, thankfully, I have last breath. Oh, that's even better. And see, this is the other thing with this deck. The appeasement here, yeah, it gives me value, but. You don't have any cards in your hand, so the appeasement gives you nothing in the end. This Fender, one, two, three, one. Yeah, it's going to go that way. So basically, and it double buffs, by the way. That's a thing that happens with Fender. 
it double buffs when you Phantom Grasp it. Because it goes at the end of your opponent's turn and then also at the end of your turn. Which might be intended, but either way it's kind of disgusting. I last breath whatever he plays. Yep. And this is if he hasn't attacked, and he will not attack this turn. So, oh, BM. Blade Master's better, right? Threatens lethal. Yeah. And even now, like, heal is worth more than three mana, remove a card, subtract two from your hand. Like, no card draw in an appeasement deck is th not good, in my opinion. If he wants to spend... If he wants his Ymir to be used to only control a gigantic Fenrir, that's fine. Um, this won't give it health, but I don't need it to give it health, I just need it to drop, and I win the game. So, bottom line, that was a really slow start for the f well, not a slow start, but I had the correct answers, and Freya couldn't get off the ground. The appeasement value only worked once. You know, that, that was when I had it in my initial hand, because at any point else during the game, I'm only going to have one or two cards in my hand, unless I draw absolutely awfully, in which case I'm going to lose the game anyway. So I think for that reason, it might be correct to remove one transfusion from this deck. Because um, there's no draw. Which means you get it less often, which makes the card worse. Which is why, in my opinion, this shouldn't be a tr an appeasement deck. This should just be a control raw deck. Um, because if if I take that appeasement out, now I get appeasement. Um, do some math. Okay, so there's four draws. So it's one out of twenty five, one out of twenty four, one out of twenty three, then one out of twenty five, one out of twenty four, one out of twenty three, one out of twenty two. So, calculator isn't giving me an answer. Yeah. So there's a there's a 29.574% chance. So approximately 30% 
of the time. So three out of every ten games you play, you will get appeasement value. And other than that, it's just a normal rod deck. Except you have one less answer. And those 30% of the games is only when you full mulligan for appeasement and then happen to draw decent cards to work with that appeasement and you don't draw like sunder right because appeasement with sunder isn't that good that specific game it was okay but that was like oh i have to use this not oh yay i drew a sunder right or oh yay i had a sunder in my opening hand it's not really what you want to do in that specific game it worked very well but that's not going to be every game so for that reason I think any appeasement deck that does not have card draw is incorrect. Um, but an appeasement deck that does not have card draw needs to have appeasement as a one of in the off chance that you draw it. Uh, because it does give you a lot of value if you have a big hand. But I don't think that happens nearly often enough. Um, I'm not sure if appeasement raw is going to be anywhere decent I'm not sure if appeasement raw is gonna see any tournament play uh, we saw some decks with appeasement in it but they were not themed around appeasement they were more like a control raw deck that also has the potential for appeasement value so I think it'll be very interesting to see if um, a card draw based appeasement deck does make any sort of appearance and if it does make an appearance, how good it will be. Um, that's all for now. Thank you guys for tuning in. Feel free to uh, leave any comments that you might have about Appeasement Raw or really any other deck below. And uh, read them and have a discussion. Or feel free to join us on the Discord, which I will link. Alright guys, have a nice day.